Hello students. Important announcement for all government job aspirants. Union cabinet has approved common eligibility tests for IBPS, railways, and group B and group C posts in central government organizations conducted by staff selection commission. This is there in the news for quite some time now. Also proposed by finance minister in our budget speech on February 1st. Now it has got cabinet approval and all set to go. Very soon we are going to have a common eligibility test for IBPS, Railways, Staff Selection Commission, Group B, Group C posts, that is SSC, GLD, SSC, HSL. And these CT scores are going to be used by many other state and central government organizations. Apart from that, private organizations, private companies can also use this common eligibility test scores. Now, we have many queries from student community like, what is the CET about? What is the eligibility? What could be the syllabus? Who can write? When, how, when should one prepare? How many times is it conducted? There are a lot of queries from student community. So this particular webinar, this session, we will discuss uh, the basic information about CET. Whatever information is released by the government, we will look at that information. So what is CET? How many times it is conducted? Who can write? What is the uh, what you call the, what are the number of attempts one can uh, one can have and we'll also see what are the advantages for this government job as students. Let us start. Now, as of now, CT is to is conducted to fill public sector bank vacancies, railways, and exams conducted by staff selection commission for group B and group C posts. Right now. Union already we have discussed this. Union cabinet has given approval for creation of national recruitment agency. So what is this NRA? NRA is nothing but it is similar to those national bodies or organizations which are conducting national level engineering and medical entrances, right? So this NRA is the body formed to conduct a common eligibility test for public sector banks, railways, and staff selection commission. So it is going to fill vacancies for posts in these particular organizations and many more in future for state and central government jobs also likely to be used by private companies. The most important point is if you observe here, please make a note of the CET will be conducted in multiple languages. This is a very a good news for students. Multiple languages means it will be like your regional rural banks, IBPS, RRBs. RRBs conducted in different regional languages. So the first level test CET is going to be conducted in multiple languages. Now, if you observe public sector banks, I'm talking about PO and club conducted in English and Hindi, but Gramina banks conducted in uh, regional languages. Staff Selection Commission, again, conducted in English as well as Hindi, that's all. Now, this CET is going to replace the first level test of this IBPS, for RRBs, for public sector banks, for staff selection commission, and for railways. In IBPS, we say preliminary exam. In Gramina banks, the public sector banks, P worker, we call it as a preliminary exam. Staff selection commission, we call it as TO1. Railways, we call it as stage one. So all first level tests are going to be replaced by CT. And good news is the CT is going to be conducted in multiple regional languages. It's a good advantage for student community. Now, as I told you, it is going to replace the first level test of these important exams. Based on the score obtained in your CET exam, these organizations will fix one particular cutoff mark. Based on that, they will call the students for next stage, next select, next stages of selection process, like tier two, tier three, main exam, interview, so on and so forth. So it depends on recruiting agency, IBPS, will have main exam and interview. Then you take staff selection commission. It will have tier two, it will have tier three. So I'm saying that for further selection process will be based on your second level, third level exams will be based on the score obtained in this particular C. And there are certain organizations which in the process of discussion, which have uh, intended to recruit directly based on the CD scores. They are going to 
done away with their second level exam directly they will call you for medical and they will give you your job so what what are all such organizations all those information is still yet to come but certain organizations are also planning to have to select candidates based on your cities now important question is when is it going to start likely to be started from the year 2021 so friends this year the exams are going to be conducted as per schedule no cancellation nothing to worry right don't worry about this year's exam we are preparing for this rrb exams or if you are preparing for ibps po exam or you are going to have expect ibps club already sbi club prelim you have written waiting for the result so all of those aspirants don't worry focus on your preparation this is going to happen from 2021 it is very clear that means for the next year all these exams will have a common first level test that is a common eligibility test 2020 exams are going to be conducted as per schedule now one more important point for students don't worry any change is for the good it is for the benefit of the student you have to think on those lines. Don't worry, what could be my CD? What is my pattern? I'm preparing for last two years. Will the silver change? I am saying at this stage, chill, relax. Don't worry. What is the silver? What they are going to test? All those information is yet to be fixed. But it is going to be a similar lines of your stage one prelim and your tier one exams. Nothing. The silver mostly is going to remain same. So you don't worry about that. As of now, focus for 2020 exams, whatever exams you have right, and we'll be ready for 2021. Once the syllabus is out, you can prepare for 2021 common eligibility test also. So no need to worry as of now. Now let us look at CT syllabus, the score, and the number of attempts. The basic information we'll look at. No bar and number of attempts. This is an important point. That means you can write any number of times, but you have to satisfy the upper age limit. So, what is the upper age limit? How much will be the CE? They will consider all the exams, all the posts. Then this upper age limit will be decided. Government has given some thought. Education is the other people, the education minister, the oh, prime minister, everybody of this business, right? So definitely all exams, all posts, all age limits are considered. You don't worry, sorry, it is going to be 27, 28, 30. Don't speculate anything. Let us wait for the notification. Let us wait for some more details to come out. Right? As long as you satisfy this upper age limit, yes, you can write as many times as you want. You can improvise from one exam to other exam. Initial plan is to conduct CED twice a year. That is two times in a year. It's a multiple, going to be a multiple choice, objective type paper, and it is going to be an online exam. Look at this. Best of the valid scores will be considered. Let us say you have given your CED. Again, you have given your CED. Best of the two scores will be considered. Are you written CED for four times? Best of the thing will be considered. Right. One more, uh, one more important point is the score is valid for a period of Three years. This is a big relief to the aspirants. Why? Well, I'll tell you something. Let us say you have written IBPS, you are applying for IBPS PO. First, you have to clear prelim, then you have to clear main exam, then you have to clear interview. Then your selection is based on main exam and interview marks, and you have to be there in the merit list. In case you are not there in the merit list. Again, next year, you have to start from the scratch. Again, prepare for prelim exam, clear prelim exam, prepare for main exam, clear main exam. Prepare for interview, be there in the merit list. Same for SSC, CGLE, or you take SSC, CHS. Once you are not there in the merit list, again, you are back to square one. You have to prepare from scratch. Again, clear prelim exam, right? And you are writing multiple exams IBPS PO prelim, IBPS clerk prelim, SBI PO prelim, SBI clerk prelim, government insurance companies prelim exams. You take NICL, NICL, or you take SSC tier one, CGLE tier one, SSC CHSL tier one, you take Delhi police, you take other exams. There are many prelim exams you are, you are writing for different, different multiple organizations, right? So for multiple organizations, you are writing multiple exams. Now you are replacing that all those first level tests, you are going to have one exam and students if you are done well in that exam then your score is valid for three years that means i will not worry about my prelim exam first stage exam i will prepare for my second stage exam it is not the case now 
Now, if you are not selected, again you have to prepare for your stage one, that is your prelim exam, as well as your main exam, that is your stage two exam, or tier two exam. Now, once I have scored, I have focused, I have got good marks in my first stage CD, then I did not worry about my first. This score is, uh, is going to be valid for three years. Now I can focus only on my main examination or my tier two examination. Right, students? So this point is very, very important for the students. Now, this CD, what could be the difficulty level? What are the test areas? What could be the likely syllabus? There are a lot of speculation going on. Now I am saying, don't worry about the syllabus, about the number of sections, about the number of marks, about the number of questions, about the difficulty. As of now, you expect it is going to be on similar lines of all prelim exams which are being conducted by different organizations. If you take your IBPS, you have quant, quantitative aptitude, then you have English language, then you have reasoning, only three sections. If you take Grameen events, you have only quantitative aptitude or numerical ability and reasoning. You don't have English in preliminary exam of regional rural science. Staff selection commission. If you see your quant, your reasoning, your English, you also have GA, GK, general studies in your preliminary exam. Right away. So, what is what exactly going to the pattern? How many sections? How many questions? Yes, we have to wait for some more time. Uh, once those details are out, we'll have one more detailed session like difficulty level, what it could be, uh, what, what could be the number of sections, what are the total number of marks, all those things. We will, once some more details come out, we will have one more session and then we'll discuss in detail. As of now, you can expect quant, reasoning, English, GK to next, to some extent. Now, difficulty level, if you ask me, the difficulty level can be somewhere between your, uh, maybe, I'm, see, I'm not sure, but I'm saying, Speculation somewhere can be can be slightly tougher than your railway exams and slightly lower than your regional rural banks. Those are the two easiest exams, right? Grameen Bank exams, IBPS, RRB exams, railway exams. It could be placed somewhere between a railway exam and uh, regional rural banks. And if you observe regional rural banks, I told you there is no English section in prelim exam because exam is conducted in multiple uh, English section is a part of main exam, but prelim exam. No, exam is conducted in different regional languages. Here also, CT is going to be conducted in different regional languages. Now, there can be English section. Maybe, may not be. We don't know. Again, it's a speculation. Till, until, unless we get the complete details, we cannot comment on that. Anybody is saying anything, it's purely speculation. So don't worry about that. There may be English section, there may not be English section. Other areas, maybe there may not. So you have to wait. How many questions, how many marks, what could be the difficulty level? You have to wait for some more time. Now, CET is conducted in three for three different levels. One for graduation students, right? That is, if you take your uh, bank exams, eligibility is graduation. One CET for graduates. One for higher secondary, 12 plus. If you take SSC or IBPS, POs or clerks, you have graduate eligibility. SSC CHSL is 12th pass. So there is a separate CT for 12th pass. And there will be separate CT for matriculate. That is your 10th class pass. Now, if you take your group D posts in some of these uh, agencies or organizations, 10th pass is sufficient. So CT is conducted uh, for three different levels for graduates, for intermediate 12th standard students, and for matriculate your 10th class students. Now, biggest question is, what is there for me? If I'm a job aspirant, what are the benefits of this seat? How this seat is going to help the government job What are the advantages of this seat? Right. No need to appear for multiple exams conducted by multiple agencies. No, as I told you earlier, IBPS PO prelim, IBPS clerk prelim, insurance exams prelim, SBA PO prelim, SBA clerk prelim, SSC CGLE tier one, SSC CHSL tier one. Right, that multiple organizations you have, you have to apply and you have to write for different, different first stage exams. Now, all those are replaced by seed. So, one preparation and one examination you are eligible for multiple applications. No need to pay repetitive fees. So this is also major concern for the student company. Most of you are in final year or unemployed. Now applying to each and every organization is financially burdensome. So no need to pay one fee, one application, one preparation, one exam. Yes, I'm going to clear my prelim. 
I'm preparing for my second session. So you can save on application fee. Next one, no need to travel different, different distances several times. So I will be as pure. let us say you're staying in some far flung area, some interior, this interior of the district. You can't have a center because most of these exams are online. So online exams, you should have, you should have some decent infrastructure, computers, good internet connectivity, good infrastructure. So good labs and all those, right? So interior of the district, you may not have all this. So every time when you apply for an exam, the student has to travel. Every time he has to plan his travel, his lodging, his boarding. Now, all those things are replaced with one exam. So instead of traveling several times, one time student can travel for one examination. CET is going to be conducted in thousand centers. In almost every district, there is, they are planning to have at least one center. So instead of coming all the way to a district headquarters or a metro, you can have nearby centers that will save your time, that will save your money, that will save your what you call the uh, travel cost. Also, it is a very safe for my girl students. Most of the times what happens is girl students, they don't get a proper people who can accompany them. They don't, they, they don't dare to come to write the exam. Right? So there's an issue, right? So nobody is there to accompany them. Then most of them uh, even uh, what you call uh, leave the exam. They didn't even write the exam. So all those things are addressed by the CET. Once in a year, see, if you ask me to come for one exam, yes, if you convince me, I'll come. But if you ask me for IBPS, PO, SBA, PO, IBPS, a dozen times, it's not possible. So it's a very big advantage to women candidates, girl candidates. Now, shortening of recruitment cycle. Recruitment cycle is going to come down, right? So, uh, what you call the time to uh, recruit, time to get a job is drastically is going to come down. Right then, some departments and agencies, as I told you, they have intention of doing away with second level tests. So they will select maybe based purely based on CT scores. After that, maybe some medical examination. That's all. Now, candidates get qualifying in CT will get an opportunity to compete for different posts in different what you call uh, agencies or organizations. Let us say I have cleared my CT exam. No, I'm eligible for public sector banks. I'm eligible for second level of public sector banks to write second level exam of staff selection commission, to write second level exam of insurance companies, to write second level exam of railways. I have different, different, what you call, we have different multiple options to choose from. So one exam, if you clear this, yes, you have multiple options. So you have to be uh, very, very careful while preparing for this exam. Now, what is the silvers, number of sections, marks, difficulty level? Yes. Once we get some more details, we will have one more session. So as of now, don't worry about this particular CP exam. Focus on your 2020 exams. This is likely going to start from next year. That is 2021. Now, it is going to be on similar lines of what we are preparing now. Basic application. So let us not worry about this. Once we get some more details, we will have a separate session based on that. And always believe change is for the good, right? So don't worry about this CED. You have a lot of advantages. You have to take it in a positive manner. Thank you so much.